This video is going to talk about repetition structures in general, and this particular program exercise and how to do it in Raptor in particular. The program asks for a running total of the number of bugs collected during seven days. So that is going to be our input, and our processing is going to be to add them all up, and our output is going to be the total number of bugs. So you have to really sit down and think about the problem. Uh, what it's asking for, it develop something in pseudocode and a generic flowchart before you sit down to Raptor or any other program language. And that is what has been done in another video that uh, a link will be provided for in the description of this video. Um, but I'm going to present an alternate method of a way that you could come up with uh, a program that uses a repetition structure. Because you might not think about it when you're thinking about the problem to begin with. It might be something that hopefully pops out at you that you realize that a repetition structure would be a efficient and useful thing to use. Uh, repetition structures are helpful because they can save you time and effort. Less work actually to make the program and then less work to maintain the program. Right, if, so the first thing I'm going to do is just make this program without a repetition structure. Just using uh, input symbols, uh, an assignment symbol, and an output symbol like other Raptor flowcharts that have been made in the past. And I recommend you do this. Get something working that you know how to do and then add to it and try to modify it and then keep it working. Also, I recommend if you're trying to solve this exercise, try to solve it on your own without watching this video, and then come back to the video when you get stuck. So the first thing I'm going to do, and the output isn't real pretty there. I missed a space, so I'll fix that. All right, and you see this program is working without a repetition structure. But I've got several lines of code that are identical or almost identical. I'm asking for input here three times. Now, that line of code is very similar. And if I want to make a change to that one line of code, I'd actually have to go three places to make that change. So I'm going to try to rewrite this some way that makes it um, even more similar. All right, that's going to be through the use of an accumulator. An accumulator is a common uh, type of variable to use in a program with a repetition structure to, con to keep adding to a total. Rather than getting the total at the end, we're going to keep adding to the total after each thing that we add. Now you'll notice if you just try to add it in, you'll get a, uh, an error that total bugs, you can't use it on the right side of an assignment operator before you've assigned something to it when it's the only thing, or when it's on the left hand of the assignment operator without anything on the right side. So if we just start out at zero, we don't get that error anymore, and you can see the variables on the left hand side and it says we only collected two because I didn't add that line to accumulate after day two and day three. But I can just copy and paste it. That's another hint for you. When you start copying and pasting, you should be thinking, oh, this is probably a good situation to use a repetition structure. I can copy and paste that one line of code, and I just have to change this, this variable. So that's a very small change. When you have lines of code that are very similar, you can usually modify them so that they are exactly similar and put them inside of a loop. Alright, so now this program is completely running uh, properly with this new structure. What I'm going to do is take these two lines that are repeated and I'm going to put those into a loop. Alright, in Raptor that is done by putting it on the no side of the loop symbol. And you can just follow lines to see how they look. Then we can take these other four symbols out because we're going to just do these two symbols over and over and over again. All right, then the hard part is figuring out what kind of question you can ask so that the answer will be no when you want to repeat. Right, this is where you might have to really think about the problem. How often do we want to repeat this? We want to repeat this seven times. All right, a good descriptive variable name in this case would be day. We want to continue this while the day greater than seven is no. All right, just think about it in English, what you're really trying to do. The, the variable name count is used in a lot of loops, but 
in this case, they is really a much more descriptive and good variable name. We want to continue this program. If we ask they greater than 7, and the answer is no. Uh, we have to initialize that variable before the loop. Things you want to have happen only one time go before the loop. Things you want to have happen inside or multiple times go inside the loop. You always, always, always have to have something inside the loop that changes the loop condition. All right, this is going to increment the day variable so that the condition will change. All right, day has to change inside the loop or else you get an infinite loop. All right, the same general structure is used almost identically in other repetition structure programs. Now notice the input keeps on saying how many bugs did you collect on day one. And look on the left, you see day is is getting larger on the left in red there. And total bugs is accumulating, our accumulator. All right, but this decision structure is working. All right, to make this program, uh, to finalize it, you would want to make it a little more user friendly by changing the prompt so that it doesn't say day one every time. And really the variable bugs day one isn't the best name anymore either. Uh, bugs this day or bugs today would be a better variable name. This video is going to talk about repetition structures in general.